All right, and we're live with the U.S. Chess School. We're very pleased to welcome back Grandmaster uh, Johan Helstein uh, to give today's lecture. And uh, well, the new topic for this series of lectures is, of course, on great players of the past. And uh, Johan will be teaching on the great world champion uh, Tigran Petrosian. Uh, so without any further ado, please uh, take it away. Okay, hello everybody. It's very nice to see all of you again. Uh, thanks to Greg and Kostya for inviting me. And uh, today's uh, topic, uh, just like Kostya said, it's uh, former world champion Tigran Petrosian. It's my favorite world champion. I really admire all of them, but uh, somehow uh, his way of playing has uh, attracted me very much uh, ever since I, I got to know his games. And that is what I would like to share with you today. So we're going to look at a lot of different uh, examples here from uh, Petrosian's practice. And uh, I would like to look at his, his games, his influence on chess in general from different angles. And the first angle that I would like to uh, look at here is what I call tactical alertness. Uh, sometimes uh, people like to compare the world champions and some people say that, yeah, this world champion was the best one in tactics and, uh, and this one was better at positional chess and so on. And I don't really agree with that. I think all of them were fantastic tactical players. And uh, you could just say that they perhaps used this uh, tactical uh, alertness in different uh, ways. So uh, if you look at the games of Mikhail Tal, for example, you can see that he was a fantastic attacking player. While the games of uh, Petrosian were perhaps more marked by more defensive play. Right. Well, he would use tactics a lot when defending. And that's what our first example is about. So here I would like all of you to think about which would be Black's best move. It's a, an extremely complex position. As you can see, uh, Black is attacking, White is also attacking. There are two passed pawns in the middle of the board. The white is the change up. A lot of things to keep track of, but uh, try to find uh, an astonishing way in which Petrosian managed to save this game with the black pieces. So, two minutes, black to play and save himself. Okay, starting with the As always, stuff. you can just write in the chat, uh, but write to me personally, please. Uh, private uh, message in, in the chat, please. Very interesting. So, of course, our bishop is hanging. And if we play queen takes g5 check, white's going to go rook g2. And that's going to be very annoying to deal with. Um, so my first instinct here is maybe like pushing d3. Let's try to get some counterplay. Because if rook takes d3, we'll have rook c1 check. But I'm not sure. d3... It's queen h1 check, king g8, g takes f6. Mm, not sure if we take a queen g2 check, it's going to be a problem. So, this is really tough. There's also queen g4 check. Queen g4 check hits the rook on d1, so white wouldn't be able to play queen uh, rook g2. Queen g4 check, queen g2. And then maybe we take on g5. Somehow there. Or even trade queens and go for the endgame. Tough one. I have no idea, guys. <laughs> I'm not sure. Oh, maybe can we go queen takes g5, rook g2, e2? Oh, queen takes g5, rook g2, e2. And then we we hit the rook and we get queen e3 check with counterplay. Okay, time's up. I had uh, many different uh, suggestions here, but only two students uh, found the move that Petrosian found in the game. Yeah, I think even Rex Shahid is on the wrong wrong track here. Oh, no! So this is, I'm sorry, Greg. <laughs> bad news, but <laughs> this is a difficult one. I wanted to get everybody really awake, so I chose a difficult one to start. Uh, so, 
the two students who found this one was uh, Zoe Tang and Troy Cavanaugh. So let's see, Zoe, if you would like to, to share here. with us your solution. So I play rook c2, and the idea is to prevent rook h2 check. And if rook takes c2, then queen g4 check. And then you can take the rook with check if king h2, bishop e5 check. So, yeah. Exactly. That's a very nice move, right? Rook c2. Uh, astonishing resource. Just like Zoe says, we have to prevent rook h2 check. And that can only be done by rook c2. There are other moves here. For example, if bishop e5, some people were talking about bishop e5. It's a clever move as well. However, after rook f1, queen g4, and rook g2, actually, uh, black is in trouble here. For one. This is like computer lines. Bishop g3, and here by queen b8, white will have a strong initiative. Please notice that if we give check here, actually, it is black who will have troubles coming up on the h5. So uh, the best move here, rook c2, White cannot take on c2 because of this check on g4, and the rook falls on d1. On the other hand, uh, if we play a move like queen g2, it's uh, not a good idea for white because now he would lose both these pawns. Well, black would take on e2 and take on g5 with the queen, and he would pick up this pawn next move, and then only black can play for the win. So in the game, uh, Petrosian's opponent, Pilnik, was very clever. He gave check on h1, and we had a funny perpetual check here and the game ended <laughs> in a draw. So, I understand. There are other moves here that you would like to check. Let's have a look. What about queen takes g5, says Kostya and Austin. Queen g5, I think the problem is now rook g2. Now we have to be careful about the white queen coming to g8, right? The white queen would like to go to g8. Can so if I play e2, here? e2, I could play rook e1. And what would you like to play now? Oh, I was thinking queen e3 check. Aha, queen e3 check. And that was and the I end guess... of my calculation, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I'm not a, I'm not Tigran Petrosian, but I think I would find here king h1, right? And I, I don't see how black can cope with white's attack here, queen g8 coming up. Uh -huh. But uh -huh. please let me know if you, if you discover something. Uh, so it, it's bishop h4 says Eva, but that yeah, how cannot about, How about bishop e5? Oh, no, at, this mo at this moment, I don't no, think never so. Mind. Or maybe d3? Sorry? Or is queen g8 coming? Oh, oh sorry. Queen g8 um... uh, and rook h2, it's, it's on the menu here. Yeah, yeah. So I think it's, it's, it's really difficult. Yeah, Brian mm -hmm. Tay, you're completely right. Rook c2 is the only move not to lose. Okay, cool. I mean, it, it's always interesting to kind of computer check these old games. This game is from 1952. That's mm -hmm. a really long time ago. But actually, Petrosian found the only move to save the game, and it's a kind of computer move, wow. uh, rook c2. It's not, not easy to, to see this move. Very suspicious. So <laughs> this is just like, a, like an introduction so that everybody here understands that he was extremely gifted in tactical play. Can I ask one not... more question? Sure. <laughs> um, what if queen g4? Okay, queen g4. Yeah, I had a look at that one as well. Here I think now, yeah, unlike queen takes g5, I would play rook g2. But here I cannot do that because uh, you wouldn't take my rook, right? So I would play queen g2 instead. Oh, okay. And I... in, in the first place, you're right, Greg. When I saw this example, I thought the same thing. Okay, if we swap queens and take that pawn on g5, I also thought, uh, oh, black, king black would be okay. Takes g2, right? so, sorry? Oh, king takes g2? Yeah, because I'm going to go for an attack mm -hmm. now. Okay. We swapped rooks, but I'm going for an attack. Uh, I mean, okay, I'm, I'm attacking this pawn, but I mean, I'm also trying to do something on the, perhaps on the, on the G file. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, I mean, an attack in the sense that if you protect the pawn, then I would play for mate here, I guess, mm -hmm. G2, that, that's what I mean. Okay. So I think it's difficult here for, for Black to, to save himself. It's difficult. And uh, what, I, what I don't know is how long time Petrosian needed to find the move Rook C2, because it's not, not easy at all. Dang, uh, to see this resource. But here we have very bright students who found it, like <laughs> Zoe and Troy. You're smarter so, than me. <laughs> I don't know. They're smart. Hats off to them <laughs> and le let's uh, continue. Okay, I will put something a bit simpler now. So this one is easier. Perhaps some people know about this example. I really like it. It's from the World Champion match. Uh, Petrosian and Spassky, they 
played for the, you know, for the yeah, World Championship. Super familiar. Why to play? I will just give you one minute because uh, I think this is easy for most of you. Why to play and win? Well, we can take on g6, but then black takes on c5. Knight takes f8, bishop takes f8. Looks okay. Hmm. Oh, is this the rook b1, rook b8 idea? Maybe we just go rook b1. Bishop takes c5, rook takes b8. <laughs> and we want to take on f7, take on g6, everything collapses. Rook b1 is sick. I think it's, it, it feels very familiar, so I'm really drawn to this. Rook b1, rook takes knight. But we'll see, we'll see. So far I'm 0 for 1. No problem, I will give you one more minute, because nobody has found so far. Petrusian's oh. move. So, let's let's uh, wait one more minute. Please look at the whole board. Uh, tax, tactics is a lot about that, right? Please focus on the whole board, not only on on the king side. I got it. <laughs> I typed it to it in chat. <laughs> nice. Okay, time's up. I only have two correct answers. Uh, these are Kostya and Darin. Kostya was first, so uh, please, Kostya, share with us. How did Petrosian win this game? Uh, yeah, my pleasure. So my first thought was, of course, like, knight takes g6. But then I thought, bishop takes c5, knight takes f8, bishop f8. Like, I don't know. Looks good, but not super clear, right? Maybe maybe not the best. Um, uh -huh. So then my next thought was, like, oh, it'd be great if, like, I could just go, like, you know, queen takes f7. So I was trying to get, like, my rook to the back rank. And then, okay, rook b1, rook takes b8 kind of popped in. Exactly. That's a very nice move, right? Yeah, yeah, that's because, it. Because, yeah. I mean, most people would think about, yeah, I mean, in the first place, we cannot keep the extra exchange. If you play rook f5, we drop the rook. So that's not possible. And uh, yeah, not much else to do here. It's easy to start looking at these captures, but uh, eventually uh, the solution has to do with this knight. So rook b1 is, is what Petrosian played. And here, as you can see, black has no real defense against it. Spassky took on c5. And uh, how is how was your variation here, uh, Kost? Oh, I was thinking uh, rook takes b8. Aha, rook takes b8. Now, if black takes, of course, he would be made the next move. Yeah. And uh, if, uh, well, Spassky resigned here. But if king h8, which is kind of computer move, uh, how would you finish him off here, Kost? I uh, guess queen f7. Oh, that's a nicer move. But don't you think I can give you perpetual here? Man? Yeah, I didn't calculate this. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, yeah, I mean, that's what that's the flashiest move. But uh, I think we should keep the queen on c4. This is about flexibility, right? We uh -huh. should use this queen only when it, and it gives check, for example. So uh, how would you adjust the move order? I guess. Um... Hmm. I mean, we could take on f8, take on f7, and then go back knight e5. Yeah, of course. That's a very technical path. To take and take and then go back, we would be a pawn up, and then uh, I guess we would win here. Perhaps even knight g5 would mm -hmm. might be interesting. But but let's say knight e5. Aha. Uh -huh. But there is an even, even quicker way to, to win the game. Oh, man. Uh, yeah. You know, checks, captures, and threats. So what's left? 
or maybe Greg would like to to help. Uh, um, Greg is very that. strong with. Sorry, right, let me think. Sorry, I was distracted for a second. <laughs> Well, checks, captures, and threats. Uh, one check that we haven't checked here. Sorry. Yeah, Brian Tay. Bravo. Brian found it. Knight takes f7. That's correct. Oh, okay. And after ki king g7, Brian suggests knight e5. But I think I would even oh, consider just here. Oh, just that. Yeah, knight e5 is okay as well. Yeah, if you like knight e5, no problem. Yeah, this is a nice way to win the game. If rook takes, we will give mate next move. Only now the queen comes to. Uh, to f7 very obvious. but you could also put the knight on, on g5 yeah any any of these moves should work okay guys so I, I didn't see you submitting rook b1 <laughs> <laughs> well, i mean rook, rook b1 is the key move and it's really nice uh, i have tried this position on a few people and it's not so easy to, to find this move most people get uh immediately they get carried away by some sacrifice on, they're on roasting me of the board. In the so, zoom very nice if you found rook b1 and yeah for sure petrosian did he won this game so let's move on. Yeah, this one is a bit simpler. I would say that Petrosian was an expert in finding little tricks in the position. I mean, he would use small tactical uh, nuances in the position in order to improve his position. And that's what happened here. So I will just give you one minute to find uh, White's best continuation. One minute, please. Hmm. Yeah, my first thought is like rook takes d7 and then queen takes a6, but like, hmm. is that really so clear? Let's see, rook d6, take, take, queen takes. So obvious. Take take c6, queen c8. Yeah. Not seeing it there either. Huh. G4, but. So time's up. We have a winner here. It's Evan, and also Tori found it. Evan was the first one, so please, Evan, share with us. What did Petrosian play here? Um, F4. Aha, very nice. What's the point, Evan, behind f4? Oh, f4. Because if bishop takes f4, bishop takes f4, um, rook takes f4, and then rook d6 wins the knight. Yeah, exactly. We have a hanging knight on on a6. So, I, I tell you that in the game, uh, black replied bishop c7. And what would you play now, Evan? Another tactical shot here in this position. Um... Another little tactical trick. Uh, Petrosian was so good at this. Uh, yeah, we have several people finding this move. Greg yeah. Sahay, Arnav, sorry. G4? Well, you could play G4, but uh, you can also keep it for later. There is a better move here. Uh, what can I say? Queen and bishop on the same oh, oh. file? Knight B6. You could play... Knight B6. Knight B6 yeah. Aha, uh -huh. well. Uh, congratulations to all of you who found knight p6. Uh, a lot of people, so I cannot really name all of them. Troy, uh, Zoe, and so on. Aha, knight p6, that's the right move. Very nice. Only at this moment we play knight p6. Here, as you can see, we're targeting the rook, but also the knight. Black had to take here uh, on b6. And uh, yeah, Petrosian took on b6 and just rook takes d7. Now it's a good moment for. Nice. For this move. As you can see, also the f pawn is helpful here in the sense that there is no bishop h2 resource. And uh, yeah, he just ended up in a much better position, the pawn up and uh, yeah, attacking attacking position. And he went on to, to win here. Well, he, he won very quickly. Uh, this is how the game went. And game over. So, it, no, he was a world champion in the 60s, uh, Evan. Uh, people are asking here about uh, if Petrosan is still alive and uh, when was his world champion? Well, unfortunately, he passed away in the 80s. And he was a world champion 
if I'm not mistaken, somewhere around the 60, 63, 64. Uh, okay. I'm not uh, really that good at chess history, so <laughs> check uh, Wikipedia, please. Or, or, yeah, there must be many sources uh, over there. So let's go back to the initial position. What happened here was that White had a more, uh, how can I say, nicer position. His pieces are much better placed than Black's pieces, but it was not so easy for Petrosian to progress here. But he found this very nice tactical trick, F4, in this way. The bishop must uh, go away. We cannot take here due to this nice rook t6 resource and after bishop c7. There came another nice tactical shot, uh, knight b6. And Petrosian went on to win. So he was really a master in using these small tactical details in the position. And that's something that we will see more of uh, in, the, in the coming examples. So I will continue. Let's see here the next one. And this is very famous. So I guess mm -hmm. some of you might know the solution here. Uh, actually, we're in the middle of a combination. Petrosian has already sacrificed the exchange, as many of you know. Uh, he was, uh, that, that is one of his specialties, to sack the exchange. And here we have a funny position. Uh, white is uh, ahead in material, but both bishops are attacked. But the black king is also vulnerable on h8. So I would like to know which is white's best move here. Please try to find the best move for white. Yeah, this one is really cool. I mean, white is attacking here. King on h8 is weak. I think the key is understanding like how we're going to get our pieces into the game. Like rook on g1 just needs help here. Also, a lot of pieces are hanging. So if we take on e4, black is going to take on, on e3. And we don't want to give up our dark squared bishop here, guys. More than anything, our dark squared bishop is the most important piece. So that's kind of the it's kind of the key here. And FK again says knight f3, and then bishop d2, bishop c3. Yeah, I think that's right. Knight f3, super strong. E f3, bishop d2, and then the two diagonals are just killing black. Actually, he didn't sacrifice an exchange here. He sacrificed. Well, he has two pieces for the rook, but yeah, it seems like black is winning back the piece, so. Okay, time's up. A few people found this one. Fastest one on this one was Ashish Panda. So, Ashish, you're on. What to play with white here? Or we don't have Ashish. Uh... Hey, sorry, I'm away. Uh, Kosti, can you help with the unmuting of people? Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, just right, Oh, you have to do that manually. Uh, oh, sorry. I thought anybody could unmute themselves. No. All right. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Sure. Sure. Please uh, shoot, uh, Asish. I said knight f3 with the. Ah, very of nice. Either bishop d4 or like bishop d2 to c3. Exactly. I think it's kind of funny, no? Because you have two pieces in the air, both bishops, and now you actually put the third piece in the air. But like. Michael Tal used to say, they can only take one at a time, right? So this is a very clever move. If I take the knight here, uh, as is, uh, you would play, I guess, bishop d2? That's the idea, right? And then we will play bishop c3 next move. So this is terrible for black. In the game, Spassky instead took on d3. And here, unfortunately, Petrosian uh, made a little mistake. The position is extremely complex. And uh, we have two candidate moves here. He chose the wrong one. That's, that's the bad news here. In the game, he played knight takes e5. And in this chaotic position, well, bishop d4, it's enough for a draw, but not more, because there is this pawn on c2, right? So after pawn takes, knight, bishop takes king h7, white, can, white gave checks here, and it uh, ended in, in a draw the game. Mm. However, there was a better move here. Uh, well, if it's not knight takes queen, it must be queen takes pawn, right? And probably he didn't like this move due to bishop f5. In, in this way, the king can later use the h7 square. However, here, yeah, just like Aradia is, uh, is explaining here, we could play here 
uh, bishop d4, correct. Or knight takes e5. Actually, it, it will be the same thing because black will take the white queen and then we'll take queen e5. And now we have basically the same position as in the game, but there is no pawn on c2. And this means that black will have to give back a lot of material. Hmm. Uh, for example, um, where are we? D takes e5, the bishop takes, and yeah, you already know this stuff. No, the rook can take some pieces here and then uh, white will end up with a huge material <laughs> advantage. So nice. This was analyzed later on. White would be winning here. The bishop is very strong and also white has a material advantage. So it's a pity that he didn't uh, come this far in the game. But uh, I really like the, the first move here in the game, uh, knight f3. So I think that what we can see here is fantasy. He has a great imagination in, in this position. Uh, he doesn't think about moving any of those bishops. And also, we have a tendency towards backwards move, backward moves. And that's a topic that we will come back to very soon. So knight f3, very nice move. After pawn takes, after white will play now queen takes d3, and he would be ready to play here. Uh, bishop d2 or bishop d4. Well, most probably bishop d4. So very nice uh, tactical idea, knight f3. And very difficult to, to see this move. So let's continue. Nice. And talking about backward moves. Here, Petrosian found a very nice idea for white. Oh, Ryo found it in only two seconds. <laughs> so I, sh I will just start the clock. And uh, if you can write a little explanation in words, why would, do you like this move? It's not so easy to find the backward moves here. There are few pieces which can go backwards, right? So you have a good uh, statistical chance to find the right move. <laughs> please write something about this move. And uh, the person who writes the best explanation, he will talk on this one. So one minute. Nice little Nike maneuver. Bishop e2, bishop c4. That's my that's my first guess. I'm not 100% sure, but bishop, he did say backwards moves, and he said, you know, improve your pieces. So bishop e2, bishop c4 certainly makes sense, putting the bishop on a much more powerful diagonal and using the, the light squares. That's the only move that kind of makes sense to me. Like, bishop d2 makes no sense. Knight b1... No, I, in some positions, yeah, but here, like, the knight can go to d5, so knight b1 doesn't really make a lot of sense. Knight e2 doesn't seem to be going anywhere. Yeah, it only leaves bishop e2, really. g4 makes some sense, but knight will actually go back, knight e8, knight to d6. And also, he did say it's a backwards move, so g4 is not... Not very backwards. Also on g4, black can play h6, and then on h4, maybe h5, something like that. Yeah. Okay, time's up. I think only Ryo and Arnav found this one. Uh, uh, yes, oh yes, well. So, Ryo, you were first. Uh, if you like, you can uh, it's really nice you want. Ryo, oh please uh, explain what yeah, to play so, with white. Yeah, the best move is not be one because after we move it back, we'll idea is to play c3. And the knight on c6 is not very good. And then we can continue by playing knight d2, knight c4. And yes, we can include a4. And then... Uh and, and another advantage is that we have the bishop pair. Sure, that's a great, that's uh, right great thing for white. Yeah, excellent, uh, Ryo. Wow. You said that you recognize this example. You have seen it earlier, perhaps. Never mind. That's exactly what happened in the game. I think many people in this position, their first instinct would be to play knight e5. Unfortunately, here, black could just take and then put his knight on d4. And it would be more or less balanced, uh, this position. So. Right. What Petrosian has noticed is just what uh, Ryo is explaining here. That 94 is, is uh, annoying for white. It's a typical resource in this uh, Yugoslav structure, and uh, it would be great to prevent it. So the knight should move somewhere. And at the same time, the c4 square, well, it could be used by the bishop. Some people were suggesting this, but it's uh, even better to put a knight there. So it's a very nice move. Uh, knight b1. I remember that Karpov has a game also where he plays knight b1 against Spassky, I think. But he directed his knight to the attack uh, in that game. Perhaps you have seen that game. 
So it's it's good to know about mm, these uh, ideas. Yeah, uh, they are seen a lot. So knight b1. Uh, in the game, black played uh, rook d8. Yeah, now knight e4 doesn't work anymore. Yeah, thanks thanks for the pawn. There is no real uh, com combination for black here. Uh, the rook can just go back and li just like Ryo said, this move c3 will be extremely useful in order to limit the bishop on g7, right? So knight b1, rook d8. Petrosian took. This is another interesting moment because I was sure that he would play simply c3, and I asked myself, but why on earth does he give up the d file here? Why does he take? Well, there is an interesting explanation. I think the reason is that if he plays c3, well, uh, black could take on d1 and play bishop h6. Remember what Ryu said, the bishop pair. Now we would suddenly lose the bishop pair, and actually we would lose the best of these two bishops, probably, no? the, the dark square bishop. That's so funny. for this reason, he said, no, OK, I can give away the d file for, for a while. What I want to do here is to keep my bishop pair. And then he played c3. Black uh, played queen d3, but it's not really a constructive move. He just continued with bishop knight d2 here, sorry, Petrosian. Bishop f8 and queen b1. He already knows that this endgame is favorable for white, um, as long as he keeps the, the bishop pair. And uh, yeah, he went on to, to win the game later on, more or less like, uh, like, like Rai explained, with, with a4 and knight c4 and so on. Uh -huh. So very nice. Uh, not so easy to find this move, knight uh, b1, right? Some people are saying bishop e2, and I'm not sure what I would have played with black here. It looks uh, possible as well, bishop yeah, e2. I thought this was normal. Uh, if anyone has, a, has an idea for black here, please let me know. Maybe rook d8 and knight e4. Is, is that possible? I think I would try rook d8 here. And if bishop c4, I would try to bring the knight to d4. Maybe some idea with b5 later on. Mm -hmm. So black doesn't look that bad here, does he? Yeah. I think Petrosian's move is better. And actually, when I checked with the computer, some of these examples, uh, it would often approve of Petrosian's play. So nice move, knight p1. Please remember this little idea. So let's continue with backward moves. Well, you're playing with the white pieces here. A typical position from the Torre attack. You can see that white had a bishop and he swapped it for the black bishop. So that's how we came here. Uh, why to play? Please send me White's best move. Okay, we're on backwards moves again. Okay, now very limited options. Knight f1, bishop f1. Bishop f1 is interesting because it kind of works against the knight on f4. Like bishop f1, knight f4, g3. And the knight will have to move away. Also opens up White's knight to be able to use the c4 square and attack the uh, e5 pawn. So. I don't know if bishop f1 is what I'd play in a game. Like I would think about a6 as well, but okay. Considering we're, we're on the topic of backwards moves, then bishop f1 seems like the thing to do. Bishop f1, knight c4, spring out that way. Okay, so most people were using the same square here, but they would use it in different ways. And <laughs> let's listen to Darin. Darin has an interesting idea for white here. Please share with us, Darin. Oh, okay. Okay, think, please go ahead. Okay, my idea was bishop f1, and I think this is good because First, it gives up the c4 square for the knight to next go to, mm -hmm. which will make the knight very strong there. Mm -hmm. And there might be a possible play in the future of something like g3, bishop g2, possibly, to create like the dragon structure and might like, and that uh, might reinforce white's like king side. Uh huh. Nice. Excellent. Thanks, Sadarin. That's what happened in the game. Petrusian said that, well, he thought that the c4 square could be used by the knight instead. And also, we will come to this later. Petrosian liked very much to safeguard weak spots or potential weak spots in his camp. So in this case, he's safeguarding the g2 square. That's why it's such a good move also. We could play, of course, knight f1. This is possible as, as well. Some people were saying here and, and plays the knight on e3. Yeah, I think this is possible. I don't know what would have happened here. Perhaps I could play knight f4. Uh, we could play knight e3. 
doesn't look that bad for, for white, but let's see what happened in the game. Bishop f1. So safeguarding the the queen side, the king side. There was rook d8. And here comes a really difficult move because most people, when they look at this position, they would say, okay, time to find a good square for the queen. <laughs> Where would I put it? Well, c2 looks uh, sensible, right? Yeah, it's not c2. in it's, the way for any other problem. piece. Yeah. But actually, Petrosian didn't play queen c2. He put his queen on e2. And what? that's not a difficult, that's not an easy move. That's a difficult move to find. And why did he put the queen on e2? Well, he noticed that in the absence of a dark squared black bishop, he would like to put his queen on e3. Well, also in the absence of a dark squared white bishop. Wow. So the queen would become excellent on e3. It will be uh, controlling the c5 square, and also it will look at the pawn on h6, which might seem Imagine playing queen insignificant at this point, but it's not. You will see very soon. Just like walking. Black played knight f4. Wow. There was queen e3. And whenever you played with Petrosian, this is just like with my famous uh, countryman, uh, Ulf Anderson. It's uh, important not to move your pawns too much. Whenever you move a pawn, you weaken something, right? That's what, when I played with Anderson, uh, this has always been a concern. He's extremely strong in exploiting weaknesses. And uh, that's what happened in, in this game as well. Because black played here g5. Wow. He should have played something like king g7, but then knight c4 looks nice for, for white. I like this setup. Here we can see clearly that the knight is really useful on, on c4. It's putting pressure on the e5 pawn. We will perhaps go look ad1 later on, and black will already have some tactical issues here. But g5 was not the right way to go against Petrosian. Now g4 is a threat, so rook ed1. Yeah, Arnav, you're right. Black is lagging in development. That's, of course, another important issue. If the a, a rook was on e8, for example, this would be a different story, of course. Uh, Black played rook e8, and now we have the move that Darren uh, proposed here, g3. But after knight g6, actually Petrosian didn't play bishop g2, which was possible. He played h3. Anyone understands uh, why did he play h3? You can just uh, uh, share in the in the chat. Okay, so. Uh, some people say prevent g4, but actually it's not really. Yeah, Zoe found this plan. Exactly, Zoe, good, uh, uh, very good discovery. The knight would go to uh, g4. Nice so shot. Uh, after rook, uh, sorry, knight df8, knight h2, as you can see, this is already uncomfortable for black. Uh, knight g4 is in there now. And here black played h5. And I told you, against a player of Petrosian style, we should be really careful with pushing our pawns. I think most of you can guess now Petrosian's next move. He was a master of provocation as well. So here we can use the provocation idea. Exactly. Daniel and Evan already found this move, bishop e2. We are provoking black to play a move which he doesn't want to play. We're provoking him to play h4, because if he takes on h3, we'll take on h5. We can play then, let's say, Bishop g4, and we will have a fantastic uh, grip on the light squares. So in the game, that was h4, bishop g4. Yeah, we already know what's going on here. White now has uh, many squares to work on. King g7. And here is another fantastic move by Petrosian. It's not really difficult, but uh, as soon as you spot the weakness on f5, you can understand what he will do next. He's looking at his pieces and which is the piece that he could direct to f5. Well, it's not this knight because it's busy protecting the bishop. So he uses the other knight, knight df1. Very clever. The knight will go to e3. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here uh, some people were saying knight hf3. Yeah, I guess that's possible as well. Suppose black would protect his pawn. I must say I prefer Petrosian's choice here, knight df1. That knight was not doing anything, and now it will come to e3. So he won this game very quickly. Uh, double the rooks. And we will go for an attack. Well, he didn't double yet. Knight g4, very nice. Uh, now, rook d1 is also in the air. Black played knight f6. Another idea for white to, to break queen d2 and bring the knight. So, yeah. And at this point, uh, maybe you're already, you fall asleep already with all this maneuvering. And now it's time for action. So, queen takes e5. Petrosian finally goes for the attack. Queen h6, as you can see here, he knew a lot about attacking chess as well. So rook ad1, all the pieces almost are in the action now. 
knight f6, and a typical idea in attacking play, mobilization, knight f e3. The other knight will replace the, the knight on g4. So, yeah, the rest is easy. Rook e1, we don't want to swap pieces. Now we install the threat of taking on e5. And the last little detail here, h4. As you can see, he's attacking just as well as uh, Mikhail Tal. Uh, very good attack. And here, black resigned. So, a very nice example on how to play with backward moves, uh, kind of safeguarding the position. And then we start uh, to exploit weaknesses in the opponent's camp. So I really like this example. Uh, please notice this little idea, bishop e2 provocation. OK, let's move on. Let's see what else we have here. So backward moves. Let's see one final, one last backward move. One minute, white to play. OK, here we go. Hmm, backwards moves. Oh, sorry. Well, ninety one. <laughs> Rugby two. Cause black I guess wants to play Take Take Night G four. So, time's up. A lot of people found this one. First one was Daniel Asaria. So, Daniel, please share with us. What would you play here with white? I went for knight g1, h3 to g5. You just noticed oh, this, this went really nice for the knight. Aha, uh -huh. excellent. But you yes. notice that white can, uh, black can actually prevent this, right? He could yeah. play something like uh, f takes e4. And how would you recapture on e4? Um, I'm tempted to say with the knight, but maybe I should. Uh -huh. Yeah, you should take with the knight. I think if you take with the pawn, then black might perhaps play knight g4. So knight takes e4 is, is a good idea. And what I like here is that if black plays knight f5, well, then you could actually use your idea. Never mind the fact that the mm. bishop is attacked. You can just stick to your idea, right? Yeah. You can play here. What would you play? I guess just knight h3. Exactly, you would just play knight h3, and now the knight is coming to g5. And mm -hmm. if black takes on h6, you have several options here, but uh, you would win material, if I'm not mistaken, at this point. You can take everything. I don't know, knight d6 is very Exactly, tight. you can take on d6. So this is, I think, winning material because we're attacking the rook as well, and if bishop takes, you have queen takes. And... Yeah, it seems to me that we should somehow end up with extra material. So very nice move, knight g1. Yeah, thanks, uh, Daniel. Excellent discovery. Black played f4 in the game. Uh, this is too optimistic. Uh, Gufet was uh, one of Petrosian's favorite opponents. Uh, he would always win against him. It's interesting. Uh, some people, they simply didn't have patience for Petrosian's style. <laughs> well, it's easy to understand. Uh, g takes f4. And uh, if e takes f4, you have this trademark of Petrosian exchange sacrifice. Well, actually, oh, yeah. it's not really Beautiful. sacrifice because you would get back the, something here on the B8, perhaps. Something like this. Huge advantage in the end game. So in the game, there was 97. And here we will see a nice typical move by Petrosian. After uh, bishop takes e5, we cannot take on b6, really, because of pawn takes an e5. This is very strong for white. The queen now has to keep uh, track of the knight. And also e6 is in the air and so on. So, bishop takes e5 was played in the game. Now the rook is attacked. Uh, anyone has an idea of uh, where that rook is heading? What to do with that rook? Rook e6, let's go. Exactly, Arnav. Okay, Arnav, you can share with us. Where did the rook uh, go? Or oh, maybe, you, yeah, you have a microphone, right? Okay. Where to put that rook? No microphone. Okay, it doesn't matter. 
but I mean, this kind of move, Rook E6, that's the kind of move which uh, fascinates me. So that's perhaps why I like very much the games of Peter Sian. Fantastic move, uh, Rook E6. Yeah, I know if you take it, uh, we will get back material immediately. But even so, even if it wasn't a sacrifice, it's a great strategical move because the pawn is very dangerous and the knight will come to d5 and so on. So the game finished very soon here. Uh, Petrosian didn't uh, get confused here. And yeah, he went on to, to win this game. Uh, he was very strong, by the way, in chaotic uh, tactical positions. Yeah, we saw that in the first example. Uh, he, he, would, he wouldn't uh, lose, his, uh, lose control in tactical positions. He, he rather liked it very much. So. No problem for Petrosian here. This is how the game ended. So, very nice idea here by Tigran Petrosian, knight g1. The knight was not doing anything substantial on e2. It's now like Arnov, sorry, like uh, Daniel explained to us, it's going to g5. Okay, so enough with backward moves, I think. And now we continue with another interesting aspect of Petrosian's play. I would call this anti-materialism. Mm. Maybe you have another word for that in English, but uh, what I'm referring to is that uh, you are ready to give up material when you think that the situation uh, asks for this. So we're playing with the black pieces here. That's One minute, word. try to find uh, black's best choice. This is a slightly misplayed Benoni by white, but as you can see, F4 is, is coming up, right? So One minute, try to find black's best move here. And the hint is not to be uh, too materialistic. Black to play. Hmm. Hmm, B3. Yeah, B3 is interesting. Just shutting down White's... White's play. Hmm. But C4 doesn't Okay, give up time's up. I think only <laughs> Ryo and uh, Arna found this one. Ryo found it in five seconds. So, Ryo, please... Share with us. What did Petrosian play here? A second time, Lava. <laughs> the best move is C4. Uh-huh. But the idea, like, yeah, okay, if you don't play it, we just play nice C5, bishop A6, etc. Et sure. And so he has to play F4. Uh-huh. Uh, F4, knight And knight D3. Take, take. And here, like, yeah, you have to take, or else I just nice C5 and stuff. And here, nice C5. Sure. And here, nice C5. Queen d1 or some somewhere. Uh, bishop a6, all the pieces are active. Queen, uh, bring the queen and rook in. His, his pieces are not even developed. Yeah, exactly. Uh, he's very That's strong fine. and yeah, uh, everything. And you actually, you gave the whole course of the game. That's exactly what happened in the game. Excellent uh -huh. work, uh, Rayo. Aha, uh -huh, very nice. You didn't know this example before, I guess. You just found it very quickly, just as Petrosian. Uh, it's logical because if we look carefully at this position, uh, in the in the Benoni, you you have to play generally speaking actively with black, no? and uh, it's easy to see that this knight is important on f2. So in a way, you're also uh, swapping one of his main defenders, the knight on, on f2. But so that's why also c4 is a very good move. We could play other moves. I think the computer also likes uh, knight c4, for example. It's it's a reasonable move, and then you can play something like bishop a6. But I like uh, Rayos and Petrosian's move much more C4. It's much more direct, it's easier to play, it's more active, and so on. Probably White should have played just Bishop E3 here. And uh, still we could continue with Ryo's plan, Knight C5. This looks fantastic for, for Black. Uh, in the game, White was just uh, crushed here in, in this game. Uh, all the moves that Ryo said, Bishop A6 coming, uh, White played Bishop F1 in the game, this does not work. But like I told you, Petrosian was an expert in little tricks in the position. He simply took the pawn on e4 because he knew that after bishop takes a6, he would have queen b6 check. Yeah, this is how the game continued. And yeah, if you want to see the last trick here, bishop d4, very bad idea. Don't open files when 
you don't have your rooks connected uh, here uh, white paid for this i'm sure that many of you can find the right move g3 just a few seconds pop it exactly yeah right ryu and arnold already found it right knight takes g3 that's what happened in the game yeah white is completely lost here if rook takes e8 he's then made it. i think this one was in woodpecker lagging. method actually i recognize very nice <laughs> uh, play by petrosian c4 this is an aspect that i like very much in, in his games anti-materialism and this this will uh, explain also later on when we will look at his famous exchange sacrifices so let's continue here we have an end game there are a lot of nice endgames by Petrosian. We won't have the time to look at uh, all of them uh, tonight. Only this one, I think. Uh, this is a strange uh, endgame. I will give you just one minute. Try to find <laughs> White's best choice here. Please notice that we're not playing for a win. A draw is, is fine here with the White pieces. A draw this is fine. We have to game. be very careful that one minute. we don't let him play C5, for example. That would be very bad for White. So. White to play. Send me White's best move, please. I mean, we're on the topic of anti-materialism, so there's only so many ways of giving up material here uh, that make sense. Um, like, rook c5 feels like the obvious move, but the problem with rook c5 is black will just bring the king in. King f6, king e7, king d6, you move your rook and then pushes c5. So, my guess is uh, if we go rook f2, then black pushes c5 right away. My guess is actually maybe something crazy. Maybe it's some b4 takes knight b3 idea. Where you can't go rook takes a4. And you can't go knight c5, rook a7. No, knight b3 makes no sense. Forget I said Okay, anything. time's up. Uh, we had some correct answers here. Uh, but not many. One of them uh, who found the right move was no uh, Troy Kavanaugh. So, Troy, please share with us I mean, how to play with white here. Takes rook well, black's plan is very clear in his position. It's to bring the... Uh, King to the queen side and maybe pair a uh, c5 advance and then uh -huh. white's position will crumble, so we have to sacrifice a pawn to get our king active. G4 is a good exactly. Move. Oh, G4. Then I would take the pawn. King, king G3. G3. Yeah. yeah, here they actually agree to a draw. Let's make a few more moves. Yeah, what uh, would follow, Troy? I was thinking about F4. this. I should have said it. Of course, it. king f4. <laughs> this is already a bit dangerous for black. He's a pawn up, but actually he's in a bit of danger here. Because so G4, if he continues with his plan, this would be bad for him. Here King you would e5. play simply King e5. Is King e5. And believe it or not, but we have some kind of opposition here, despite the fact that it's not a pawn end game. But it's it's uh, now a bit uh, uncomfortable for, for black this position. White King is very active, so it's better to just uh, uh, stay calm here with black and play rook b6, and white could then play rook c5 and rook a6, and it's, it's a draw. So uh, that's the way the game ended. And please notice that you cannot play really rook c5. Some people were saying rook c5. I understand the idea, of course, but it seems you have missed the point that black would then bring his king. This would be very dangerous for us. We would lose a few tempi, so. Uh, very important move, uh, g4. Very important move. Uh, important to find this move. Not uh, obvious at all, I would say, but if you think about the opponent's plans, and that is an area which uh, Petrosian excelled in. If you think about your what your opponent would like to do in this endgame, just like uh, Troy did here, it's rather easy to find a move like at G4. Okay, so some people are saying that I have seen this. Well, I'm happy. Then you have good chess <laughs> education. Let's continue. Yeah, another example. Now we're in the opening. Tigran Petrosian is facing Korsnoi, which was one of his main uh, oh, antagonists. Heard about uh, in, they met a lot of times. A couple uh, days ago. The world. I would like you to send me here white's best move as you can see uh, the black king is still in the center that should mean something right white has a development advantage how would you exploit this situation white to play one minute you can just send me one move bishop f7 is tempting well set the problem in the previous example with black getting c5 is that if black gets their pawns going 
then they're going to start taking a lot of space because black had extra material in that position they had an extra pawn or two so if they can then break the blockade and get their pawns moving then it's just like all over we're just down too many pawns so yeah i'm thinking here like bishop f7 queen b3 check throw the knight to e6 maybe knight d5 f4 uh, drops e3 with check so we got to be careful there yeah, F4 would be a YOLO move, that's, that's for sure. I don't know, I'm not fully feeling Bishop F7. Check, King goes back to E8. It's certainly very annoying for Black. Okay, time's up. Uh, this was a more difficult one. Many people were thinking about taking on F7. I understand this idea. <laughs> Sorry, it's very logical to sacrifice something when the opponent's king is in the center. However, if we look carefully at this, I, I want you to notice something here. I would hide my king on h6 here. This would be the best place for my king. Mm -hmm. So here I could put my king on h6. And no, f4 could be the right. interesting Absolutely. thing is that if we play, for example, maybe you thought about a move like f4 so that the rook can come to h3. Unfortunately, this would give black a tempo. And now he could play something, I think, like knight f8. In this way, Black would try to get rid of that knight so that the king could go back to g7. However, the idea as such to sacrifice on f7 is excellent. Simply, this is not the right moment for, for the sacrifice. So, uh, Tori has another idea. Please, uh, Tori, share with us. Uh, which is your idea here? Um, my idea was to play f4. I just saw that there were a lot of miners that were taking up a lot of squares and some uh -huh. pawns on the side. Wow. So sure. the queen only has two moves. Well, it has a couple of moves. It can, can I take? I, yeah, I can take. Um, I was thinking to just move the king because if sure. you take, now you've opened up the e file. Uh -huh. And then you can maybe play rookie one next move. Exactly. And they can't castle because if you play rookie one, the bishop will be hanging. So uh -huh. then you can eventually play rookie one and they'll be... Or even knight 5 perhaps. Uh, yeah. This looks then... nice as well, right? Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. And if the queen goes, uh, let's say, if it goes to d6? Um, here I was thinking to maybe play knight e4 to bring another knight into the center and to attack the queen. Yeah, you could actually play knight e4. It's not a bad move. I would play something like queen b6. But you have a stronger move here. Please remember what we saw uh, the previous variation with the sacrifice. If you remember, at some point we tried f4 in order to bring the rook to h3, right? But since we already played f4, black kind of used now up the option of queen takes now we go. e3. So by simple logics, which do you think King is white's rook best f3. move? Game over. Bishop takes f7. Exactly. Now I will take on f7 because I already have f4 in, so to speak. Now we can do all this stuff. That's if cool. he goes to g7, we will play knight e6. And as uh, we can see here, uh, black would be mated. So it's uh, your move is excellent, Tori. And also it's the most flexible move because we're not showing black still how we're going to attack him. Like you say, if black takes, we're ready to go knight e5. That will be on the top of our list of, of moves. Uh, on the other hand, if he puts his queen on, let's say, d6, we're ready to sack on, on f7. So that's why I like this move. Uh, that's, that's why I think it's the, it's the point here. Yeah. Thanks, Tori. Excellent uh, discovery. So f4 is a very flexible move. And Petrosian doesn't want to commit his knights. He, he's not still sure uh, how to use them. So that's a, that's a great move, f4. In the game, there was queen b8, and you already... I uh, guess the, the right move here for white, of course. Uh, Petrosian took queen b3, and Kosnoi had to go back with the king. We already know that king g7 would fail to his check and rook comes to f3. So king e8. And here, finally, uh, Petrosian commits his knight, knight d5. And he also commits the other knight, but as you can see, it's just a crashing advantage now. All the pieces into play. He must have been enjoying this moment because I know that he was not on good terms with Kosnoi. They were not exactly friends, uh, as far as I know, chess history. So b5, knight, c7, check, and knight d4. Well, here we go again. 
backward moves, uh, one of Petrosian's specialties. Uh, yeah, we're threatening this check and also the other check, right? So it's impossible here for Black to survive. He played King F8, Koshnoi was a fantastic defender, but even he cannot save himself here. And Petrosian simply took on A8 because next move, that will come Queen E6 with uh, a lot of damage to, to Black's uh, position. I think they gave this variation. It's a nice, nice little variation. Uh -huh. So uh, what you saw here was F4, very flexible move. Petrosian is happy to give up this pawn on E3. He knows that it's poisoned. Uh, I think it was, was it Koshnoi who said, or was it Polugayevsky who said that when Petrosian sacrificed something, don't accept. When Mikhail Tal sacks something, uh, accept it. Well, I don't know. Maybe this is just uh, something that, that they said, but I, I think I heard it somewhere. Anyway, let's yeah, yeah, move no, on. I, I know the phrase. <laughs> oh, oh, please share, I've Kostya. You, you yeah, know yeah, more so about chess history. When, How is it? Um, okay, I mean, I'll try to get this right. Yeah, when when Tal sacrifices, you take it every time. <laughs> uh -huh. um, when Badvinik sacrifices, I think you don't take it. <laughs> and then when Petrosian sacrifices, you resign. It was something like that. Ah, you resign. Yeah. <laughs> I had, yeah, sure. That that makes some sense, yeah. Right. Uh -huh. Interesting. But yeah, I have heard that. Okay. So they, they are quite different uh, styles, no? Uh, the world champions had different styles, uh, it's fair to say. Uh, so let's continue and now we're getting into the action this is what Petrusian, what made him so famous mm, I, know this uh, I guess many of you know this example uh, but some of you might not know about it you're playing with the black pieces here and uh, as you can see the pawn on e5 is hanging and also we could say that the structure here somehow favors white he has a nice semi-open file to work on so please send me what you think is Black's best move here. And please remember that we're still talking about anti-material education. So, Black to play, what should he do here? Okay, Twitch chat. Hmm. Yeah, this is a well-known example. I would say not as well-known as like the uh, Ryshevsky Petrosian game. I think that one is like really the classic, classic exchange sacrifice. But this one is also uh, very well-known. And now it's like so basic, like almost anyone can make this move. Bishop takes c6. Mm not quite what we want because these this pawn on c6 is going to be really strong white can go dc or bc and yeah knight e5 bishop goes back to e2 and then pushes okay F4, time's up out of e5. Uh, some people found this one one of them was uh, aradia panda uh, i'll unmute you this very moment please aradia share with us okay so like the first move i really looked at was like um, like f6, but like that just gives up the e6 square and it's like very weakening. So I came up with the move e5, and the idea is that um, like we do we do lose the exchange, but like after uh -huh. bishop e7, but like we can just go like um, I was thinking to go like f5 or something, and sure. then after and we get like a big center and like his knight on c6 is kind of good, but it's kind of trapped in also. And his uh -huh. rooks aren't too good. Exactly. Funny, no? Funny with the whole exchange down, but the pawn structure is so close that it can hardly be felt. Beautiful position. Uh, and this is what Petrosian really, uh, you, you can say that he, he really contributed to chess uh, legacy heritage uh, with this concept. Uh, I cannot think of any other uh, world champion who was uh, that uh, frequent in, in exploiting this idea. So this is exactly how the game went. Uh, Aradia, you got it all right. This is just how the game went. And uh, Portis, who was a very strong player at that time, mm. he didn't really know what to do here. And I think 
it's not easy for anyone to play white. It's simply not the kind of position where the rooks are that strong, right? Yeah. There was bishop e2, bishop h6, rook c2. And another thing that you can see in uh, Petrosian's games is that he's very patient. So he, he doesn't like to rush with his pawns. We can do that later. And he played here uh, simply bishop c8. A question here. In 1972, wasn't Petrosian really old? No, not at all. He was born in the 20, 1928, I think. He must have been about 45 years old. Not uh, my age. Well, <laughs> it depends on, on how you define old, but uh, not really old. Uh, he was in his top uh, top level. In, in the 70s, he was a very strong player still. So, Bishop C8, it's a flexible move. If we play something like E4, well, perhaps white at some moment. There is a nice plan with giving back uh, some material in order to bring a knight to d5. Perhaps in this way white could get some activity, but there is no rush, says uh, Petrosian here. I would first put my pieces on good squares. And that's what happened here. And only at this point he played f4, and then he brought his bishop to, to f5, I think, at some moment. Uh, it was later a draw this game, but uh, black was uh, altered, I think, a bit better here. You cannot even feel that he's an exchange down, or at least I cannot feel it. And I would say that this knight is probably stronger than, than the rook. So, yeah. uh, can we see the whole game? Yeah, but it's not really interesting, this game, Arnov. Uh, well, it depends on, your, on what you uh, mean by interesting, but uh, it's just uh, they swap some pieces and the game ended like this. It's like a perfect blockade. And this is our next subject, by the way, the blockade. As you can see, the position is blocked. The knight is fantastic on f4, c5, sorry. However, it's not easy to progress with uh, with black here. Uh, e4. Of course, if e4 at some moment, uh, white will be very happy to just sacrifice on e4. So it was a draw here. Anyway, going back to this position, it's not so easy to find this movie five if you're not used to this concept of yeah, the sure. relative value of pieces. Yeah, knights can be better than rooks in closed positions, not always. And also an, an interesting fact for you, the computer approves this movie five. It's completely, uh, it completely agrees with this movie e5. Perhaps white should have taken on e6 instead. But, well, psychologically difficult. No? I think Portis didn't even know if Petrosian blundered or he just gave it away. Of, well, I guess he, he knew that uh, it was not a blunder, but you know, blunders happen. No? But d takes e6, although psychologically difficult to play this move, I think it might have been better. And you put your bishop somewhere, I don't know, bishop e3. Perhaps here white will have some slight more, slightly more chances of getting an advantage, but who can resist taking the exchange? Uh, difficult, right? But black is very well here. He's, he has a very good position here, so it's, it's good, a good example to understand uh, something about relative value. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, this is a long class, I know, but uh, we're already in, the, already in the second half, so don't worry. But if somebody's very tired, no problem. Uh, you can just uh, leave at this moment, but uh, still, we have some things coming up here, so it's, it's up to you guys. This one is very famous. Now we're talking about prophylaxis and king safety. This is a famous game against oh, Spassky. Yeah. As you this can see, is... Spassky is attacking on the queen side. Classic. And Petrosian will later on attack on the king side. But before we start the attack, we have to do something prophylactic here. One minute, try to find black's best choice. Yeah, this game was so famous, it was in my system, which came out. 40 years before the game. <laughs> yeah, that's right, Xander. It makes sense to sack the exchange for a piece that is very active or important to the opponent's position. Uh, Spassky Petrosian World Championship match, I think, was um, 1969, I think. <laughs> Looking at this position now, it's like, oh man, horrible for white. But the real genius of this game was not the move a6, which is kind of like, okay, very simple. The real genius was his move c4 earlier, because like he gave up this d4 square for the knight, um, knowing that like the knight on d4 is not going to do anything. So a lot of people found a6. this one. Uh, fastest here was uh, Crystal. Please, uh, Crystal, share with us. What did uh, Petrosian play here? Um, I played h3. 
A H three. Then I must must have misread. I thought you said A six. No. No. Oh well, H three is an interesting move as well. Try to open up the the king side. I think I would well take this pawn. And what was your plan here? Well, it, interesting, Crystal. But uh, actually, this is what Petrosian will do later on in the game. He will attack on the king side. But we had another idea here. Uh, I must have misread. Sorry. Uh, anyone would like to share a solution? Um, where are we? Oh, so so much uh, people. Uh, let me let me see. Uh, Troy, maybe Troy, please share with us the the solution. What to play with black here? What's your concept here with black? Well, the concept is, um, as someone in the chat said, um, a6 creating a locker. Uh huh. Permanent. Um, you can't get through on the queen side. If a5. And b5. And then... Uh huh. And obviously, if b5, then yeah. a5. Yeah, I'm sure you you know about this uh, idea. From, from before. But still, Troy, what do you think would have happened? Let's say if black plays knight f8 instead. I mean, that's that's a logical move as well, right? To bring the knight to g6. But what do you think uh, Spassky would have played here? Well, b5 and then a5 is possible. Aha, b5 and a5. Or I think even the other ways. Even a5 I mean, this, this is a6. promising as well, right? Because right. now black is just one move away from playing a6. But it's our turn. So what would you play? Um... I mean, a6 is possible. Exactly. We play a6 so that he cannot protect the b5 pawn with the a pawn. And after bishop c6, uh, which plan do you like for white here? Um, I guess just bring the knight to d4. Exactly. And then we can, exactly. And we can put the rook on a5 and we will hit the pawn on b5. So Petroskan didn't like the looks of this. Okay, thanks, uh, Troy. He didn't like the looks of this. And for this reason, he played a very nice, simple prophylactic move, a6. So in here, he's using the pawns in order to block the enemy position. Uh, White played king h1, and now he started an attack, and uh, he went on to, to win this game. So this is really important stuff to, to know, to understand. Uh, yeah, so a6, uh, very clever prophylactic measure. Let's continue. Yeah, this is a difficult one. Uh, only Petrosian can play like this, uh, I would say. Well, let's see. Black to play. As you can see, White has an attack coming up. Uh, what would you do against that attack? One minute. Uh -oh. uh, black to play. Uh oh. I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> oh man, what's going on here? F5? Why F5? Prophylaxis. Okay. Bishop wants to come to F5, Queen G4. Actually, what I would do here. I need more time. Right, g6, bishop f5, anyways. Who knows? Okay, difficult one. I think uh, on this one, only Austin uh, understands uh, what will happen here. So please, Austin, share with us which is your idea for black. Well, I wanted to play king h7, but uh -huh. was to play uh, meet bishop f5 check with g6, though, like you said, it was a wrong plan. No, it's not a wrong plan, but it's uh, wrongly executed. Uh, we indeed should move away our king from the g file, uh, but just in a different way. Because uh, I understand your idea. It's, it's not a bad <laughs> idea, really. Uh, I don't know if white can perhaps play h4. Is that possible? And then. He could play h5 and try to uh, bring the queen to g4. So, uh, but you're completely right with moving away the king. Just that Petrosian, he put the king on h8. And why on earth did he put the king on h8? Well, Petrosian had noticed that the g7 pawn 
might need protection. In the game that followed Bishop f5, Queen d8, you already know about this, the backward moves. But there is a co concrete reason why he played this, because if he plays rook d8, which might have been his intention, white would have queen h5, hitting the pawn on f7. So he played mm -hmm. queen d8. And after queen g4, uh, rook d8. Yeah, uh, you're right, Arnav. We will play g6 and f5 later on. But wow. first, we should consolidate. We should strengthen all the weak squares in our camp. b3, and you might laugh at the next move, but it's very strong. Bishop f8. All the pieces are going backwards in this example. But here, you can already see what will happen. Black is ready to go g6. He will put his bishop on g7, and he might be able to play even f5 later on. That's what happened in the game. Queen e2, g6, bishop h3, and f5. Petrosian, of course, noticed that there was a pin along the e5. And he got the much the better game here later on. Uh, just before white was able to play something active here, he took, and we ended up in this position. Please notice how this position uh, changed. Yeah, right? was so good now defending. The, the bishop is much stronger than the knight. Yeah, the crushing. king is not in danger anymore. We are ready to perhaps swap some pieces on the e file. Mm -hmm. uh, in the game, there was rook d3, rook b4, and c4. Very uh, nice position for black. Complete uh, metamorphosis here. So what happened here was that Petrosian noticed the need of safeguarding his kingside. And he did this in this funny way, just putting all his pieces on the eighth rank. But it, it was very strong. Of course, white could have played better here. But uh, I think the example is it's really useful. It shows how we can uh, first safeguard, uh, try to prevent opponent's attack, and then we can go for counterattack. OK, let's move on. Here, on the other hand, as you can see, well, maybe I shouldn't say so much about this. I would, should rather let you think. Uh, <laughs> White is playing for an attack here. Try to find Petrosian's solution. Yeah, I think I will try to, uh, to, to finish uh, soon the, the sessions for today. Uh, try to find here Petrosian's choice, uh, how to deal with White's uh, upcoming attack. One minute. Black's best move, please. I like king d7. I'm just going to say it right off the bat. I like king d7. You just, just run. Just king goes to c6, behind the pawns, connect the rooks, connect the heavy pieces. That's it. King d7 and run, exactly. Bishop f8, I'd, I'd be worried is just too slow. also play queen d7 but I kind of feel like the queen is going to be needed on the uh, diagonal okay time's up many people found this one that's excellent uh, Aradia Panda is one of them Aradia please share with us what to play with black here yeah so like white's like attacking and stuff on the king uh -huh. with like knight g3 h5 and stuff so like um uh, and my move was king d7. I also looked at queen d7 uh, to like long castle, but I thought king d7 is just better because like we just go um, straight to the queen side and like uh, c6 is surprisingly a safe square. So uh -huh. And maybe also he could play something like b3 and try to attack yeah. you, right? If you commit your king. So you're right, king d7, that's exactly what happened in the game. And after queen c2, uh, Petrosian noticed that he can now bring more pieces to the queen side, to the king side. How would you do that, uh, Radia? How can you bring more pieces to the king side? It's the same logic as, as the well, previous example. How yeah, to strengthen like, our king side? Yeah, my idea was just to go like it's probably not very good, but like just like ninety eight, ninety seven exactly. to like control the h five and f five squares, like uh -huh. because nice. White's trying to break through sure. with his pawn there. Th that's what happened. First, Petrosian played queen f eight to have the queen there as well 
And then he played knight e8. Yeah, backward moves. We already know about this stuff. Knight to g7, like Aradia is explaining, it's important to keep control of these squares. And here, simply queen f7. Very nice call move. We're preparing to bring the other rook to the action as well. After h5, Petrosian didn't like the looks of gtex h5. It would uh, permit f5 with some activity for white. So he just stick to his plan. And here, white co uh, committed a huge mistake. He should have played something like king h2. Uh, in the game, he played h takes g6. This is a bad idea. Now it will actually be the white king which will be more exposed. So rook h2. And here, Petrosian notices that the time is right for a counterattack. He was excellent with counterattacks. So anyone would like to suggest here how to counterattack with black? Please remember that Petrosian is very strong with uh, counterattacks, uh, tricks in the position. Okay, Arnav, you found G5. it. So uh, please, uh, Arnav and also Aradia found it. Please share with us, Arnav, how to create a counterattack here. Oh, no microphone. Okay, Arnav says G5, and that's the right move. That's what Petrosian played. As you can see here, there are tactical tricks on the F file. Nice. So if knight takes, uh, we will actually pick up a piece here. This bishop will be hanging. So rook takes and rook takes. Now black is already attacking. And here we have a nice uh, tactical shot. Uh, someone would like to try to find black's best move here. Uh, black to play and win now. Look for tactical uh, possibilities uh, on the F-file. Oh, f takes g3. No, because I will take with check. Please don't do that. Bishop h4, interesting, but I could take on f4 then. Anyone else? Maybe you're tired already at this point. Yeah, a lot of chess today. Queen g6, rook takes h2, knight h5 or something. Well, or something. Look for that something. Aradia, if knight h5, I think I can take and take on f4. I think I'm, I'm safe there. Please notice that this knight is not participating, so uh, it should be something really strong. Knight f5, yeah, Tori, you found it. Congratulations. Only Tori Porat found this move, knight f5. Well, Petrosian also found it, of course. Knight f5 was played in the game. Very nice tactic, tactical trick. Petrosian has noticed that if bishop takes, well, the rook will fall on f1. Oh. So knight f5, that's it. Very nice. nice tactical idea, temporarily blocking the f file so that after knight takes f5, we're ready to take on e3. And after queen g2, uh, the next move was definitely not difficult for Petrosian to, to see. Master of tactics, he would see this in the, a millisecond. What did black play? Anyone? Of course, yeah, Sherry, Shang, you're right. e2, that's it. And white resigned because he's losing a piece next one. So I think this is a brilliant uh, example by Petrosian. He noticed just like uh, we had explained here by Aradia, the king is a bit exposed on e8 and it's a closed position. So the king could hide on d7. Aha. So excellent idea. Then we bring our pieces to the to the defense. Well, to the attack uh, ultimately. No? So where are we? How many examples are left here? Uh, this is the last uh, example about defense, but maybe I, I should skip it then so that we can move on. Yeah, another thing that Petrosian liked very much was the blockade, the blockade. Uh, one minute, try to find a blockading idea for white here. White to play and create a blockade, okay? Hmm. Blockade. What are we blockading exactly? It's not G4, right? Maybe EF5 and G4. Yeah, that makes more sense. EF5 takes G4. Takes, takes, creating the E4 square for knight. That's really instructive, actually, because it's really hard to play G4 in these positions. Yeah. Please don't don't blockade here because I can blockade myself and then I can unblock your knight. So that's not the right part of the board. Look for the king side, please, guys. Okay, uh, we have the right answer here. Uh, Jason Liang, Jason, please uh, share with us. 
this was a difficult one, it seems. But uh, Jason found it, so what to play with white? I do E takes F5, G nice. takes F5, G4, undermine uh -huh. the um, F5 pawn to get the E4. Exactly. You know what? Here, black played F takes D4, and what do you think Petrosian played? With some exactly with some imagination, there was wow. nothing wrong with F takes D4. The computer approved this as well, but I already told you he's an anti-materialist player and he played here knight E4. So if pawn takes, it. it's extre extremely dangerous for Give the for pawn black. Uh, the king has no nice. defenders almost here. So uh, in the game, nice. black played bishop F4, and uh, here uh, Jason, uh, you can give us White's next move. What do you think? Petrosian played here. He didn't take the pawn. Well, that's why I'm asking. What would you play with white? Hmm. He's now ready to attack. Bishop b3. So what do you think he played before? Perhaps black plays knight before. Rick what do you think? <laughs> Rick Rick How to attack the black king? Oh, well, was this difficult? Maybe. Okay, I guess he simply noticed that the black king is exposed and a nice way to uh, to take advantage of this situation is by rook b7. So that's what he played in the game. And again, as you can see, the king is now in huge danger. There was knight c7 and pawn takes g4 with a huge advantage. He later on played uh, g5 and queen h5. So the blockade was one of his favorite ideas. If rook takes a5, of course, we would simply play then knight e4. Fantastic knight on e4. Bad bishop, you might say. G5. So very important to understand this idea. Okay, very quickly, let's continue. Uh, this is a, a famous example. Uh, Petrosian oh, yeah. had played the King's Indian with white. And as you can see here, he has managed to block the black king side in this way, right? With these pawns here. This means that no knight, black knight, can ever come to f4. There is no way for the knights to get there, sorry, but uh, white can perhaps at some moment bring a knight to f5. So that's that's the idea of this structure. Anyway, the subject here is the blockade. One minute, try to find Petrosian's blockade idea. All right, Twitch chat, up to you. Man, we're getting a hell of a workout today, huh, guys? <laughs> Oh, this one was difficult. Hint, the movie is surprising. The movie is a surprise for many of us. Yeah, I believe he took on c5 here and then uh, mm -hmm. played bishop b5. Okay, bravo, we have a correct answer. But Arnov has no... Okay, yeah, no problem. Take, take, bishop, b5, and then knight comes to c4. And if take, take, bishop, b5, knight, e8, white takes on e8. Rook takes e8, knight, c4. And two perfect knights in this position. Yeah, this one was difficult. I mean, we had many interesting ideas here. Some people wanted to play knight, h3, they liked the knight. But uh, Zoe has a very interesting idea. The idea is to get Zoe, the knight to e2 to g3. So you need the bishop. Uh, so I played bishop takes c5, and after d takes c5, knight c4. Black's e5 pawn is weak, and like now you have a protected d5 pawn. In the future, you might have ideas of like knight e5, knight f5, or like knight h3, knight f2, knight d3. Aha. Uh -huh. I would say there is only one uh, dark side with this idea that I could actually play here knight e8. And in this way, I would try to bring my knight to d6. So if you like, you can adjust this uh, plan. You can improve it. We start with bishop takes e5 and d takes e5. And in order to prevent knight e8, uh, what would you play, Zoe, here with white? I mean, you cannot prevent it, but what would you do against it? Because you know that this knight would be terrific on d6, right? So what can we do in order to uh, prevent this knight transfer to d6? Uh, maybe you could try bishop b5. Exactly. That's what Petrosian played in the game. Excellent. So if knight e8, what would happen? Oh, sorry. You, you and... Yeah, but I'm sure we, we're talking about the same thing. Of course, we would swap that uh, knight uh, so that we keep our own knights. And this is how the game would continue. Now we have a fantastic blocking knight on c4 
black cannot use the d6 square in any intelligent way, white would be clearly better. In the game, black didn't accept uh, this situation. He played bishop b7, and he did it next move. And you can already guess here what Petrosian played. Of course, he took an e8, and he went on to, game, to win this game. It's a perfect blockade on c4. As you can see by now, yeah, Petrosian, nice. it seems to me that his favorite piece was the knight. So you can see strong knights in all, almost every game here. Uh, you could prevent 98 by resigning, says Arno. And yeah, it's a funny, funny comment. So it's a very uh, an ast astonishing idea, right? To, to swap this strong bishop for the knight on c5. But, you know, don't look at what uh, leaves the board. Look at what stays at the board. So what uh, Petrosian is trying to, to obtain here is a position with good knights against bad bishops. And for this reason, he's quick to take on on c5 and play this nice move, bishop e5, a very important move to prevent the knight transfers to d6. And by the way, the other day I was looking at some games from the Russian higher league and I came across this game. Uh, now we're in the year 2020. <laughs> uh, Predke with white, Demchenko with black. Uh, these mm -hmm. are very strong grandmasters. I wonder what, <laughs> what white should do. Anyone, here. what do you think that Predke played? Oh, okay, Arnav already <laughs> found this one. Anyone else? What do you think that uh, the Russian grandmaster played here? Take Bishop some B5. 50 years later on. Of course, of course. Dude all knows of his you classics. Very Excellent. nice. Bishop takes e5 and Bishop e5. Yeah, you could say Predke, he, he, he knew his Petrosian, so to speak. And if. 98. Yeah, it's a slightly different structure, but the idea is exactly the same. H3, and again, we have good knights versus bad bishops, right? So th yeah, this was what scores. happened in the game, and uh, white went on to win, by the way, so that you can see that uh, Petrosian's heritage stays uh, intact. Uh -huh, almost the same position, so uh, yeah. Yeah, we can skip this one now in short of time. And here we're, this is the last part of this session. Finally, <laughs> we're in the last part. Here we, we are going to look at the blockade, anti-materialism, and uh, defense at the same time. Black is threatening to play e4. What would you play with white here? This is the kind of position which made Petrosian very famous. So please try to find white's best defense against the move e4. Okay, guys, here we go. Look alive. I mean, we got to put a rook on e1, right? But the question is, if we play rook e2, we're allowing bishop d3. And if we play rook e1, oh, we allow knight d3. So, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, rook e2 comes to mind. And if bishop d3, we just give the rook for the light squared bishop. You know, no problem. Ricky one ninety three. Ooh, G three. I don't think we want to do G three because G three black plays E four and just starts crashing through. Okay, time's up. Evan is one of those persons who found the right choice here. So, Evan, please uh, share with us. Uh, rook e1. Rook e1, but you're now losing the exchange. What happens? Well, oh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Okay, nice. I think that's what Petrusian thought as well. It doesn't matter. The main thing here is to prevent e4. So what would you play next now, Evan? How um, to lose the exchange here? In which way? Which would be the best way to lose the exchange? How would you like to organize your pieces here? Well, you know that the e5 is important, right? Yeah. So we should perhaps uh, let black take on on e1. Um. Oh, so rook uh, f e2. Exactly. Rook f e2. Knight takes. We should take with the queen. The queen, of course. Now we are already, already putting pressure on e5. Black played here. Rook e8. And we could play a move like bishop e4 or knight e4, right? But uh, Petrosian didn't do that. What Rook do you think e4. he played here, Evan? No. Can you find another interesting move for White? He went Ricky four. Guys, it's something that Trojan you would like to play here. Played Ricky Positionally four. speaking, strategically speaking. <laughs> um, Looking at the pawn structure. You don't even need. I would go C five actually. I think C five is the move. 
the Ricky Ford is just pointless. <laughs> I think C4. Oh, it was a tough question. I mean, you have a, a majority, right? In the on the Queen's. Yeah. Side. So like C5. So what? Exactly. So Petrosian played C5, very strong move, so that this pawn can perhaps advance one day. And after Rook F F8, Knight E4. Yeah, actually, he didn't want to keep the the Knight on the board. I guess you could have played bishop e4. Yeah, this class will will finish very soon. No problem. We, we, in ten minutes, we're we're finishing here. So bishop e4 was also possible. I guess somehow he didn't like the idea that well, some moment black would play f3. I'm, I'm not sure. He played here knight e4, but it's a good move as well because the bishop is also keeping control of the, the d5 pawn. It's not clear anymore who is better in this position. Yeah, thanks, Evan. It's not even clear who is better, uh, despite the fact that black is exchange. So very clever defense here, uh, rook e1. Some people would just reject this kind of move. Oh no, I cannot play that because I would lose the exchange. But I'm sure Petrosian did, didn't look at it that way. He, it was a re relief for him, I think, when black <laughs> swapped his knight or call it uh, as you like. Uh -huh. yes. So very nice idea, rook e1 and then rook e2, just giving away the exchange in order to establish a blockade. And uh, again, the same story. You already know the picture. The opponent's looks, they aren't really doing anything. And now, finally, we're ready for today's last position. So I saved the best part for the end. And I think many of you Classic. already know this position. Anyway, Classic. some of you might not know it. <laughs> One minute. Let's go. Uh, try to see how to cope with White's multiple threats here. Uh, White has several. Ricky ideas. Six. Guys, One. what are you doing? Bishop can take. Let's be serious, guys. Come on. What's this Ricky say? This is, Bishop the, I think, the most famous position in all of Petrosian's games. I do think this is the example that like really oh it's in all the books mr gm genius chess <laughs> if if you get yourself some chess books you'll <laughs> you'll find this position in there <laughs> cuz it was very well known it was played against rashevsky like big tournament and you know rashevsky's like he's doing well in the game he's leading and petrojan pops out this rookie 6 Hold the draw, easy. Okay, yeah. time's up. We had many people finding the right move. I think many of you have, have seen this before, but not everybody it seems. So, wow. uh, Alexander everybody. Wang, please uh, share with us how to continue with black here. Uh, so here, white, it wants, white is playing like E6, and that's really strong because uh, black really just crumbled apart can't really defend. So in order to mm -hmm. defend, we sacrifice the exchange of rookie six. So exactly. That, so after he plays bishop e six, we play f e six. And after f e six is it now very solid, and now there's nothing on the e file, so you can't break through. And the and so because there's a new pawn on e six. Uh -huh. and so, yeah. yeah. And what about this knight, uh, Alexander? It's not, it's, uh, the knight, I guess, is, I guess the knight maybe can maneuver to d5. Sure. Yep. The knight should go to d5, right? The more yeah. centralized the knights, the better. Aha. Uh -huh. Excellent. And, and maybe you know the story, Alexander, uh, how Petrosian found this move. I have uh, heard that, no. that he, he simply looked at. Well, they say he looked at the knight and somehow he asked himself, where should this knight, uh, where does the knight belong? Oh, I see, on d5. And he tried to find a way for the knight to get there. And he started looking at moves like, let's say, rook b7 Wait, or rook a7. So, sorry? Wait, oh, I see. I, I don't ah, know. trying, to, trying to, 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 to vacate the, the e7 square. But then he noticed that it would be far too dangerous for the reason that, that you are explaining. Uh, Alexander, e6 would come. It would be too dangerous for, for him. Uh, these pawns would, would start running, and uh, yeah, it's not uh, nice for, 
for the blank. Yeah. So then, according to the story, he saw the right move and he was astonished that it was so simple. <laughs> and that's the move we're talking about, right? Rook e6. So fantastic concept. He noticed that actually uh, it, it's worth to give up the change. This knight will be very strong. Again, we're talking about relative value of the pieces. Uh, the, again, white's rooks, uh, the opponent's rooks will not do anything once uh, you sack the change. And uh, Rosevsky was a very strong player. And he, he noticed that he could try here a4. This is a very clever move because his idea was that if Petrosian plays the most natural move, b4, well, then actually Rosevsky could sacrifice something himself. Before taking up, picking up the exchange, he could play d5. This was uh, Rosevsky's deep idea. So that after rook takes d5, he would take on e6, and he could take on c4. And here, at least you could say that the white bishop is a bit more active, right? But Petrosian noticed this, and that for this reason, he simply continued with his plan, 97. And after bishop takes e6, f takes e6, already white should be a bit careful here, because also we have this idea with the passed pawns. So there was queen f1, 95, uh, rook f3. And here again, uh, white, black would like to move this pawn, but unfortunately the pawn on c4 is hanging. So you could say that Rosevsky played really well at this part of the game. Bishop d3, and I guess everybody knows what white will play here, right? It's not so difficult to find white's <laughs> best move. If we are materialists here and we play move like queen f2, no. well, black would play b4, and this would be, again, very dangerous for, for white. Black would have fantastic activity here, and fast pawn coming up, there's something hanging here as well. But of course, but uh, Rosevsky knew what, what he had to do here, so he took on d3, and in this way, he won a pawn. And this was the last crucial moment of the game. You can choose between b4 and b takes a4, uh, which one do you think is the best? Anyone? Aha, it's better to go b4. You're right, uh, Austin. That's the right choice here. If we take on a4, well, after c4, these pawns would become mobile again, and the pawns can be blocked by the bishop. So, mm -hmm. of course, we should play b4. And here, I guess, as uh, Rosevsky noticed that if c4, actually, he would have some troubles here, because black would take on a4, and he has connected past pawns, and he's still keeping control of the center. So. Rosevsky was very uh, realistic. He just took on before, and uh, the game went like this, and it ended in a draw. Uh, Petrosian is a pawn down, but it doesn't really matter because he has this fantastic knight in the center. So Rosevsky was never able to win this. It ended in a draw. So this is a very famous game by Petrosian. I saved it for the for the end so that uh, you could see a lot of other things as well. So rookie six, Classic. fantastic move. That's it that's what i had prepared for today uh, thanks to everybody uh, sorry if the class uh, lasted a bit longer than than we thought but there were so many things to look at right uh, such an interesting player that was young yeah that so, was uh, that was great thanks yeah, yeah yeah thank you so much uh johan that was uh, no that was, that was an awesome class i could look at the trojan games all day <laughs> guy was such a genius <laughs> me too <laughs> Uh, all right, guys. I'll okay, be... so thanks, everyone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, you, you can take it from here, Kostya. Uh, yeah, I'll just uh, be closing out uh, the class now, but thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Thank you, Johan, for, for coming in. Really appreciate it. Okay, so bye-bye.